Recently, more and more people have been asking me, how do we observe the weekly Sabbath? Before discussing what the scriptures say on this subject, I want to briefly discuss why it is important that we have the correct day. We are told in Exodus 31, starting in verse 12, and Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Verily you shall keep my Sabbath, because it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, so that you will know that I am Yahweh that sanctifies you. Therefore you shall keep the Sabbath, because it is to be holy or to be set apart to you. Everyone that defiles it or profanes it, dying they shall die, because whosoever does any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from being his people. The Hebrew word for shall keep is shamar, which means to guard or to hedge about or to protect. So this is very important to have this right. We are commanded to guard it with all of our being. This includes showing up at the correct appointed time for it. Surely our Creator would have given us instructions to determine when something that is so important is to be, and He did. As with all things, it is a matter of simply believing His Word. I remember when I was beginning to fear Him enough to examine the Sunday Sabbath deception. It was so obvious that Sunday was the wrong day that it was simply a matter of changing. The mistake that I made was I did not have enough fear of going against my Creator to examine the frying pan that I was jumping into. I fell for Satan's escape trap in, in my laziness. He has been allowed to set up snares to test our resolve and to prove if we truly love and fear our Elohim. It was simply a lack of fear of being wrong and laziness that caused me to assume that those calling themselves Jewish today had the correct day and Saturday. I was not guarding or hedging about his set-apart day that was given to me to sanctify me. But I did keep questioning the religions of men, and I did keep coming out of the lies, so I was still coming to his call, so he kept calling. That's why he says, many are called, but few are chosen. Most stop, they get st st stuck in one of Satan's traps, and they stop coming to his call. And he stops calling. As I continued to come to his call, he continued to show me how all things are simply a matter of believing his word. His word proves what is true, and it proves what is false, and it proves what is not his word. And it proves what is his word. Knowing this, he then showed me that he calls his Sabbath his appointed times. And he tells us that he put the luminaries, and specifically the moon in the sky, for us to determine when his appointed times are. It really is this simple. You can believe him or not. This is your choice. But I suggest, suggest that you lean not on your own understanding and believe him. His word's going to define what's true. I'm not going to go into all of the details in this video on how to determine when his Sabbaths are and, and, and why and how Satan perverted um, when they are because I have in other videos. I will simply refer you to these other videos. Here they are. Determining the New Moons, Part 1 and 2. Our Creator's calendar, the Sabbath day, are, are the new moon's commanded worship days, changing time, sundown to, and sundown to sundown, parts one and two. Folks, this is so important to have correct because I read you back there in Exodus that his Sabbaths are to be a sign that he gave us between him and us. Plus, they are for our good. And they're pretty serious to have them right, as we'll read here in a little bit. The sundown to sundown video videos show that the scriptures show that the Sabbath days last from daybreak until the going down of the sun and not from sundown to sundown as Judaism teaches. Also, some want to say that the Sabbaths were for Israel back then, and this is not true. Well, they were for Israel back then, but they want to say that they're only for Israel back then, and this is not true. He commissioned the Sabbath, the, the day after he made man and put him here on the earth. And it is to be a statute forever. Yeshua certainly kept the Sabbath in their appointed times and he told us to follow him. In these, video, these videos um, suggest here that, that I put, I suggested here, well, you will be able to see that Satan's purpose to hijack them was prophesied to happen. I'm not going to go into all those prophecies today, but... In those videos, you'll see all this was to happen, just like his Satan was to deceive the whole world was to happen. You know, people think, well, I'm not deceived. Well, then you're just above Scripture. 
Our Creator told us that He set them apart, the Sabbath apart for us, that that He that He wants us to and that He wants us to set them apart for Him. So it's simply a matter of setting them apart. He tells us that His Sabbaths are to be a Sabbath throne or a day of rest where we draw closer to Him and are fed by Him. We are told that they are also to be a holy assembly. In Leviticus 23, verse 3, six days you shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a holy assembly. You shall do no work therein. It is to be Yahweh Sabbath in all of your dwellings. We read elsewhere that his Torah is to be read at, at the set-apart assemblies. Today, for a short season that remains before Yeshua returns, returns this set-apart assembly might just be those in your own household or even by yourself with Yeshua and his Father abiding in you. So, of course, you won't be alone if they're living in you. However, if there are others that are in the truth near you, you should certainly strive to assemble with them and read the Torah at that assembly. And the Torah is more than just the first five books, as many think that it is. It is his path that includes his judgments, statutes, ordinances, and precepts that are found throughout the Old Testament and in the writings of Matthew and John. So we are told to do no work of any kind. We are told that the day is to be set aside for rest, and we are told that there is to be a set-apart assembly. As with all days, it should include our time alone with him in solemn prayer. But what are the details of what we are to set it apart from? Precept upon precept, we set it apart from the day-to-day -day cycle of life. He told us to prepare our food the day before, as evidenced by the account in the Exodus with the manna. I want to interject that the list of do's and don'ts are not what the Sabbaths are about. Yes, there are do's and don'ts, but they are guidelines to teach us how to set the day apart for His purpose. They are not in themselves what the Sabbaths are about. People want to make a religion out of the do's and don'ts, and they miss the entire point of the do's and don'ts. No work of any kind would certainly include our day-to-day -day household chores, such as di doing dishes or laundry and things like this. They can wait till the day is over. And we should prepare ahead of time to have the day prepared for, so that we can set it apart. But the reason for not doing these things is so that you can give your Creator your undivided attention and He can have your ear. Also, they are given to us to the Sabbaths are given to us for our labors, to reward us for our labors, and to point us to the final 1,000 years while man will be given rest from Satan and his cronies. If we made the importance of us setting the day aside from our work very clear when he set the example with the guy gathering wood that is recorded in Numbers chapter 15. The man was gathering sticks on the Sabbath, and he was caught and brought before Moses, and Moses did not know what to do, so they put the man in a ward, and Moses inquired of Yahweh what to do, and we read in verse 35, And Yahweh said to Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All of the congregation shall stone him with stones outside of the camp. And all of the congregation brought, brought him outside of the camp and stoned him with stones, and, and he died, as Yahweh commanded Moses. Do you think that this is just too harsh? Well, what if this man was allowed to continue to set the example that profaning the Sabbath is okay to his children and to others? Is it fair that he would be allowed to lead his children or others to the lake of fire? Is that justice? In order to understand, you have to have a paradigm shift and realize why we were given life. We were put here to be made in our Creator's image, and he uses his Sabbath and the rest of his Torah to accomplish this in us, accompanying with his seven spirits that guide us into his truths and teach us the spiritual intent of his instructions. This man obviously did not have a repentant heart or Elohim would have pardoned him. He had the attitude of, what's the big deal? So I gathered a few sticks, so what? And he was made an example of, so that Israel would know the importance of the Sabbath command. He told, told us in doing this how serious profaning his Sabbaths are. Doing so leads to death. Do you remember the verse that I started with today in Exodus 31? If you profane his Sabbath, dying you shall die. It is the same thing that was told to Adam and Eve for deciding right for, from wrong for themselves. When we do, we are no longer living to have eternal life, but rather we are living to die. 
If you think that the death penalty for defying his Sabbath is too harsh, you simply do not understand why the Sabbath was given to us, and you obviously do not understand why we are here in the flesh. You mentioned some people think that the Sabbaths were for the days of old, or that they were just for Israel. I'm not going to go into who Israel is in this video, because I have in many of these videos. But I will share with you a prophecy that is prescri prescribed for the end times that we are in that shows that the Sabbaths are still intact and that he is calling a people to return to them. In Isaiah 58, verse 11, And we will guide you continually and satisfy your souls in the dry places, and he will deliver your body, and you will be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And from you he will build the vanished places that were made desolate, and he will rise up the foundation of many generations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. He is talking about right now, and he is talking about the people that he is calling to be delivered into a new era of time when all things will be restored. This new era of time is the thousand year reign of his son and the first fruits of his family. It is impossible to refute that these verses are talking about the time of the end and returning to his Sabbath at this time. In the next verse, in verse 13, he says, If you will turn your feet to the Sabbath and do my desire on my set-apart day and call the Sabbath a delight, the sanctified of Yahweh, and glorify it and glorify his path and attain his desire by speaking his words. Remember I said about there about reading his words on the Sabbath? Then you will delight upon Yahweh and you will ride upon the high places of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, because the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. Do you want to be delivered or not? If you do, then you are going to have to return to his Sabbath and return to the rest of his Torah. There is no way of getting around this. All of the prophecies about the end times point to the same thing. Returning to the paths of old, uh, they were given to perfect us. You can hold on to Saul's doctrines if you want, but you will be purged out because the truth has no place in you. There are other instructions for the Sabbath that should be common sense, like no buying and selling. You read this in Numbers 13, verse 15. In those days I saw in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves, and ladding asses, and also wine, and grapes, and figs and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt men in Tyre also therein which brought fish, and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. So the children of Israel were obviously buying from these men. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What evil thing is this that you, ha that you have done, to profane the Sabbath day? This is pretty straightforward. Refute it however you'd like. It won't matter. Isaiah recorded your creator saying that if you return to him and his Sabbath, then he will deliver you. If you think that returning to them does not mean that you also need to refrain from buying and selling, this is your choice. I suggest that you do not simply return to the do's and the don'ts because if you do, then you will not be delighting in the Sabbaths, and delighting them is also a requirement. You read back there in Isaiah. Amos records some starch warnings for those of you who will return to his ways with an attitude. And this is a prophecy for right now as well, if you read the rest of the verses around these verses. And I suggest you do. Pretty starch warnings. Amos 8, verse 3. The songs of the temple will be wailings in that day. Speaking of the days that we're approaching, says Yahweh Elohim. There will be many dead bodies in every place, and they will cast them forth with silence. Hear this, you that devour the needy, and cause the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that, so that we may barter corn, and the Sabbath, so that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances with deceit? He is talking about an attitude that people will have in the last days against obeying their Creator. Some will return to him in the coming days, but will do so with a bitterness in their hearts. This was prophesied as well, and I've already, I've already witnessed it. It's incredible. It's starting to happen. I've seen people even agree to cover their heads already, as, as, as we're also being commanded to at this time. 
or even putting on tassels to think that they will save their neck by doing so. But they are bitter about other things that he is commanding and restoring. And they are hiding from their bitterness by trying to copy part of their Creator's work instead of joining in with him. It's amazing what I see going on out there. They won't join in with him because of their rebellious hearts and their pride is keeping them from selling out for what he's doing. And they think that they can please him on their own terms by obeying part of what he is telling them. The willful rebellion to man's heart is incredible to witness. And it's part of what I've been raised up to do. He goes on just a few verses later, Amos does, to say, Yahweh has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of your works. When I make mention of some trying to duplicate parts of their creator's work that he's putting forth at this time, this is exactly what Saul of Tarsus did. He took bits and pieces of the truth and made a new religion out of them. I will do a video called Operation Twist that speaks of how he does this in more detail. This is what Satan's servants do. They try and hijack the truth and mix in their own truth with it. This is exactly what his servants did with in switching the Sabbath to Saturday and to Sunday in different religions. They don't get rid of the truth, at least not all the time. Sometimes they do, but they twist it. They pervert it or they make a part truth into a whole truth to keep people away from the whole truth. This is what Saul did when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, of course you love your neighbor as yourself. That's a commandment. As a matter of fact, part of the Torah is hangs from that commandment. The other part of it is the part he left out. Love Yahweh Elohim with all of your heart, soul, and mind. The reason people do this is because they want people to follow their version of the truth. They want to be heard. They lift themselves up as prophets, even though they might not call themselves prophets. And pretty soon I'll probably start calling them by names if they don't stop what they're doing. Uh, if of course, the ones who claim to be prophets and stuff, I've already identified by name, but they want to find fault with what their creator is doing so that they can justify doing what they want to do. They do this because they want to keep the attention and the focus on themselves. It's all about their pride and their arrogance. I don't want to be told how it is. There are also other instructions like limiting our travel on the Sabbath that should define themselves as you learn the spiritual intent of them. And search the scriptures. I'm just giving you a brief overview, overview today. We are told not to kindle a fire on the Sabbath and people pervert this as well. He is not talking about a fire to keep yourself warm in your fireplace or something on a cold day. Of course, I would anticipate that if that was the case too and prepare for it. That's just a common sense as well. Make the fire ready to start or something. Striking a match certainly is not what he's talking about to have a fire to heat yourself. Some want to say things like this verse says that we cannot use electricity because it's a fire, a spark or whatever to turn on the light switch. Things like this are insanity. Do you think that they did not light lamps when the daylight was dim back then? He was talking about not kindling a fire for work purposes. There's nothing wrong with sticking the food that you have prepared the day before in the microwave or in the oven to heat it up. And Yeshua validated that it's also lawful to do good on the Sabbath. He said things like in Matthew 12, verse, uh, verse 11, He said to them, What man is there among you that if he has a sheep fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, that he will not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much then, how much more then is a man better than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. They were condemning him for healing on the Sabbath, and they were condemning him for letting his disciples pick grain to eat. They had made the Sabbath about do's and don'ts. He said to them, Don't the priests do work when they perform their sacrifices and offerings on the Sabbath, or circumcise a boy on the Sabbath? He was showing them their hypocrisy. He was not doing any work to heal on the Sabbath. Putting some mud on someone's eyes or telling them to take up their bed and walk is not work. It is hypocrisy to think that it is, and they were full of hypocrisy. His disciples were not harvesting grain on the Sabbath. They were walking through a field, and they were hungry, so they picked some grain to eat as they walked through it. Yeshua was saying to them that day they were condemning him, How is this profaning the Sabbath? He gave them the example of how David went into the temple and asked the priest for food when there was nothing for him and his men to eat. They were hungry, and the priest had nothing to give them except the show bread, which, is, which was not lawful for them to eat, but he gave it to them to eat anyway, because they were hungry. Of 
course it is not unlawful to eat on the Sabbath. And would you hold back food from someone who is hungry, even on the Sabbath? Of course not. And it is not lawful to, it is not, excuse me, it is not unlawful to help someone who is in need on the Sabbath either. I sometimes give the example of an acquaintance calling me up, broke down in an emergency and needing help. I would help them. But if they called me up and asked me to help them move next Monday and Monday was on a Sabbath, I would tell them that I would help them any other day, but that this day was, it, that, but, but this day, because it's my father's Sabbath. Helping somebody move is not an emergency. And telling them that you can help them for, 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 you cannot help them for this reason is helping them because it is showing them that you will not defile your father's set apart day. And maybe the, this will, in doing this, they will even respect you for this, coupled with your other qualities that come from your father and want to want what you have. Want to learn more about this, this creator that you follow. It really is a matter of setting the day aside and it certainly is not to be a burden to do so. The Sabbaths are to be a delight where we draw closer to our creator and let him feed us in an, an increased way and then during the rest of the week. They are a gift that is to point us to his rest and to give us rest and to feed us. They are for us. Yet it, is a, yet it is commanded that we set them apart just as he set them apart. Whether they're for us or not, they're still a commandment. And as I read back there in Isaiah 58, a people are being commanded to return to them at this time. They are a sign between him and those who will be his people. And they have been for those who have become his first fruits. And they are not for us to determine when we will show up before him either. He put the moon in place to tell us when we are to show up for them. If you don't think that they are a serious matter, ask the guy who carried the sticks for his opinion. As with all of his instructions, they are given to mold and fashion as in his image. If you don't want them, or if you don't want them, or if you want them for the wrong reasons just to save your neck, this is your choice. Prepare to find out that you have made the wrong choice.